A good Tuesday morning to you, Ryan, and everybody on Listen Up, presented by Dempsey's and Sports Land on this last check-in against uh, the Marquette Golden Eagles. I'm not a very happy check-in, uh, last check-in like we want it, Ryan, but as we know it, life goes on. And obviously, you know, it, it holds true of what I spoke on the game recap of the last episode, Ryan, because UConn moved up to number four, even though for people out there like you who don't want to pay attention to the the power rankings or the uh, or the actual rankings, the top 25, I mean, hey, it's almost like that they never really faced South Carolina. Is, isn't it kind of safe to say it that way? Yeah, well, I think it's it's probably due to the fact that they, you know, challenged them. It was a battle the whole game, and it, it was so close. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I definitely agree with the move. I definitely like the move to move UConn up to the number four spot. Of course, Stanford, I think, lost to unranked mm-hmm. Washington. So I know they moved down a couple of spots. So a couple of teams moved up. But, yeah, uh, AP poll come out, and top five still South Carolina, Indiana, LSU, UConn at number four, of course, and Iowa moves up to five. So uh, also Villanova climbed up to number 15. So that should be a pretty interesting matchup the, ne- the next time UConn and Villanova plays. But uh, two other things that I wanted to mention before we start yeah. to talk about Marquette. Uh, mm-hmm. This is the second matchup versus Marquette. First being uh, Aaliyah Edwards scored her a thousandth point. I, di- I didn't see that after the game. For the, the last uh, for the game recap against South Carolina, but uh, Aaliyah scored 25 points uh, and she she got her thousandth point on Sunday. So congrats to Aaliyah for uh, for that accomplishment. Uh, and also, Gino said that Caroline may return early as early as this week. So whether that's against Marquette on Wednesday night or Georgetown Saturday evening, we shall see. But hopefully, Caroline is 100 percent and she can stay healthy throughout February and March. But now let's talk about uh, the Golden Eagles for a little bit. They come in with a record of 15 and eight, eight and six in conference play, puts them right in the middle of the pack in the Big East standings. First matchup between these two teams is the last day of December was actually surprisingly close. UConn won 61 to 48, but you, uh, Marquette put up a good fight the whole way through yeah. battle to the end. New Year's uh, Eve, I think it was. New Year's yeah, Eve. Yeah, New Year's Eve, New last Year's day Eve. of December. Yeah, I remember it. Yep. Yeah, and Aubrey Griffin also was unavailable for that game. Senior guard Jordan King is still the leader for this this Marquette Golden Eagles team. Definitely the player to watch. Um, but also keep an eye out for Ford's Liza Carlin and Chloe Murata, as well as the freshman Emily LaChapelle. She's having a pretty good year. But I think the thing is with Marquette, and this is just my opinion, no disrespect towards them, of course, but they're just kind of an average team. They aren't great offensively. They're not bad either. And it's the same way on defense. They're not a, a bad defensive team, but they're not great on the defensive side either. Uh, it just seems like they don't really have a, a player or a pair of players that can kind of just knock down any shot you want them to or, or really lock down in the clutch on defense. Uh, but Marquette is an under-the-radar team. We thought it'd be a blowout the first time these two teams played, but Marquette showed up to play and fought the whole game. Uh, I don't think it's it's going to be as close this time, but who knows? Maybe it'll be another defensive showdown, and, and I'm sure Marquette will show up to play at their home stadium. So it should be a pretty exciting matchup. And it's kind of uh, weird that you mention that because with, with uh, Marquette, you talk about their offense and their defense, you know, they're not – really like top in the nation but they're not like the worst in the nation either and they always say you are what your record says you are and I mean not only speaking of records conference record or overall record but they find themselves right in the middle of the pack like you like you kind of explained yourself uh like you kind of said with the offense and the defense for Marquette so uh yeah but they find themselves right in the middle of the pack as far as the standings go uh for the Big East so I thought that was pretty interesting that you mentioned that and also, before we get into comments, um, I also wanted to mention about uh, uh, Marquette. Marquette's Jordan King. Um, usually, she's the go-to girl for for this Marquette Golden Eagles group, uh, this team. Although, I found it interesting. Uh, UConn did a very good job, Ryan. And I was surprised because I looked at some other games where she was putting up like 20 or 30 points a game. And then I, I rewind back to the December 31st uh, Marquette and UConn matchup. And all of a sudden, I look at the stats. I'm like, Jordan King, she had four points all game. 
She played 28 minutes, two rebounds, no assist, and four points. So if UConn can come anywhere close to limiting her uh, tomorrow night, then that will be a big, uh, big plus for UConn. Um, I think UConn coming into this matchup, I think they're a more complete, even without uh, Caroline Ducharme, uh, even if she does not play tomorrow night, I think that UConn is more of a complete team, um, no matter if they have, have brought more players back in this matchup tomorrow night, tomorrow night, or even if they, well, God forbid, we don't want to say lose any more players at this point, but all they can do is, is actually gain more players as far as coming back from injury. But I think that UConn has found more of their identity now, uh, especially that we saw uh, – never, you never know what to expect, but especially the game that we saw nationally televised on uh, Fox against South Carolina the other day. I think that UConn is just more of a complete team now, Ryan. Their identity is really uh, showing or improving. Uh, they're starting to – um, show who they really are, and hopefully they can keep that up as far as competing in ball games. Um, you know, even if it, obviously it's one and done in March, but if they can continue to stay in ball games, especially because we we just uh, put the focus on Villanova, and I think that's the last test. Um, no disrespect to any of these other teams that UConn has to face, but last test I think pretty much is Villanova on the regular season schedule. I think we can all agree with that. But, I mean, I think I actually have UConn. Uh, we will give our predictions at the end. I have them by, like, 20 points. Um, I just think that they are a more of a complete team, um, even though they have not really got a lot of players back from injury. And we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow night as far as that goes. But I think that um, this is even a bigger uh, bigger scoring onslaught for UConn. And, uh, again, Marquette, very good team, but – yeah, I, I think it's very uh, interesting the way you put that. And uh, you you put the last check in very well said, but I, I don't really see this being a uh, a tight ball game. I really don't. Because, I, I mean, again, I, I think that UConn has really uh, found who, who they really are. And, and they're I think they're trending upwards. Just say it that way. I think they're trending upward in the right direction. And Marquette is is kind of not. Yeah, and I think even despite the loss on Sunday to South Carolina, it really was a big positive to take away from that whole entire game. And like you kind of mentioned, it just seems like UConn is a complete team now, despite mm -hmm. you know Caroline and AZ still being out. That's what I mean. It's weird. It's that, yeah. And can you relate to me saying that? Because I know a lot of people watch this and be like, what is he talking about? They're, they're a complete team. They have, Half their plus star players are sitting on the bench. But I think you can relate to what I'm saying. Am I wrong? Yeah, and it, I mean, it almost just seems like, and we talked about it a little bit before, I think somebody brought it up in the comments about how the chemistry is so good for yeah. UConn, mm -hmm. and that was really on display on, on that Sunday matchup, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, despite Caroline and AZ being out and, and all the injuries we've had prior to, to all these games and early in the season, it, it just seems like UConn is kind of always a complete team, and it's kind of hard to believe, but um, you know, just every time they, they come out on the court, we always say they're they're ready to battle, but the chemistry is always there. And it seems like no matter who's injured or if they only have seven available players, it always seems like they're they're a pretty complete team. But I definitely do think they learned a lot during that South Carolina game. And Lou said after the game, I, I uh, saw the quote, she said, we know we'll play them again and we're going to win. So I, I hope she's right. I hope they do play them again in March Madness, but I, I was really glad to see that they were they were all on the same page mentally and, and physically. They were physically ready for South Carolina, and they were all on the same page mentally for that game, which was really great to see. So hopefully they can just weather the storm through these Big East opponents to finish out the regular season and get through the Big East tournament, uh, and then we're on to March Madness already. All right, wow, this is different. Um <laughs> So I guess YouTube requires to have the at the at sign now the at symbol the at symbol in front of every username. So I'm scrolling through comments. So I promise I'm not going to say at every time I say a username. Uh -huh. But uh, Ryan, let's get into comments just a couple, and then we will give our predictions for the Marquette Golden Eagles matchup tomorrow night, and then we will get out of here and begin our Tuesday, a very good Tuesday again to you. Uh, how about Rachel fight goes. I was there, and it was definitely a game that lived up to its hype. Um, on Speaking on behalf of the South Carolina game, Ryan, it didn't even seem like Aaliyah scored 25. She was doing her thing out there. 
To only lose by four points with a depleted team and you limit Dawn's bench to only using nine players on such a deep team, this shows us good signs for what could be coming up down the line. And again, yep, Rachel said it there because what did I tell you, Ryan? Uh, in other words, to explain myself over again, I said it could be getting that much more dangerous for South Carolina in the tournament, meaning uh, they're they're in danger of not winning at all. Yeah, and I agree with what Rachel just said. It really didn't seem like Aaliyah scored 25. And when I looked at the box score, I was kind of surprised. But, I mean, that just goes to show how good of a player she is. And like she just said, she kind of just out there doing her thing, dominated in the paint like she's done all season long. And I, I think she did a pretty good job against Aaliyah Edwards, mm-hmm. or excuse me, against Aaliyah Boston. Uh, Aaliyah Edwards did in the matchup of the Aaliyahs. It's just that she got into a little foul trouble and wasn't able to be as dominant in the second half, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think uh, if Ayana too can play like that, coming off the bench a little bit in March Madness to kind of give a, a little leave and, and rest to Dorka and uh Aaliyah, I think that would be huge for UConn. Ayana really showed me a lot in that game. Her intensity down low fighting for the ball. Uh, she's always been a really aggressive player when she comes into the game. So I think that would be huge, even if she comes in for just five minutes during some of the March Madness games. I really like what I saw out of Ayana. How about, I believe this is Aaron Davis. Some of these usernames have changed, and I don't like it uh, because I can't remember every single username. My mind is not that sharp. I wish it was. Uh, Ryan, Aaron Davis, uh, we haven't seen him for a while. He goes, say your goodbyes to Amari. I'm sure she's a good kid and watching South Carolina bigs control the paint boards and UConn 6'5 player riding the pine must be hard to take. The whole country must be thinking. What's up with the Barry by now? Yeah, I mean, we've kind of just been saying it all season long, and it, it really is disappointing. It really is because I, I think we all we all know how talented Amari is, and there was a lot of expectations when she came to UConn. I think, and unfortunately, you know, she battled injuries a little last season, played it in the national championship, I believe, a couple minutes, but. She's really just never had the breakthrough moment with UConn that I think we were all hoping for. So I honestly wouldn't be surprised, and I don't think a lot of other people would be surprised either if she does transfer after this season. I think she'd be a senior next season, if I'm not mistaken on that. But either way, I really wouldn't be surprised if she would transfer and try to take her talent somewhere else to show she can play uh, you know, get get more minutes off the bench or possibly in the starting lineup with another team. But if she does transfer, I, I wish her all the best. But I think uh, Aaron Davis is right. I, I just can't really see Amari playing uh, any minutes at all going forward unless UConn only has uh, seven available players at some point uh, during the season. Well, Mr. Fahrenheit, feel all that soup you spilled off your lips, <laughs> of your lips. You're not weighing into the fact that Carolina missed eight three-pointers for all the ifs and hopes and maybes. The bottom line is UConn is too small. It took last-minute fouling to even make it close. Maybe next year UConn can be in the position to win a national title. Well, Mr. Fahrenheit, I mean, you – I would like to see you sort the pieces to the puzzle out for me because I'm trying to stay positive here. But although if I tell people on this podcast that I'm looking forward to next season more than this season, they don't like it. So it's a a lose lose situation. Well, and I kind of disagree with that because I I think it was a close game throughout. I mean, it it was a tied game at halftime. Uh, South Carolina maybe pulled away a little bit in the third and fourth quarter, and it did take a lot of fouling. Believe me, we watched the fouling for for 20 minutes, like we said, waiting to record. Uh, But, I mean, I I think it was a tightly contested game the the whole way through. Uh, That's just the way that I saw it. So I'm very confident that UConn can win the the next rematch if we do get one. Uh, You know, we we keep it real always on this podcast, so I I wouldn't be sitting up here saying uh, I believe UConn could win if I really didn't believe it. But, um, you know, I I really like what I saw out of UConn. You know, they they didn't have Mm -hmm. Caroline and AZ, of course. So hopefully if we get those two players back in the rematch, they'll – 
uh, be ready to play against South Carolina. And I, I really do think that we can beat him if we get another shot. All right, let's go ahead and go over predictions and then we will head on out. Uh, last time, Ryan, the last two, two, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, the last uh, time these two teams, uh, met rather, uh, New Year's Eve, we talked about it, we went over it. Now it's time to give our predictions for tomorrow night. Um, it was 61 to 48 the last time Golden Eagles and Huskies met. Ryan, this time I'm going 75 to 50, 75 to 50, 75 to 50, UConn over. Marquette. Well, I'm going with a little bit of a higher scoring game this time too. I'm going to go 72 58 in favor of UConn. I don't, I don't think it'll be as close as the last game, but who knows? Marquette brought it, brought it last time. It it was a pretty defensive game. Maybe we'll Mm -hmm. see a little bit more of that, but I I think it's going to be another game where Dorka and Aaliyah can really dominate the boards. I, I think Lou. Uh, should have a pretty good shooting performance. Hopefully her shot is on. And I, I th- think for uh, Nika and Aubrey as well, if they can drive the lane and blow past a couple of those Marquette players, uh, I think it's re- looking pretty good for UConn offensively. Well, again, I, I talk about Jordan King for Marquette. I believe that she's coming off back in January of uh, one of her top games as far as uh, scoring. Um, and I believe a season high in scoring that is, I believe she scored like 31 back in early January. So again, if they can limit her. I think that's the key to success. Um, and again, UConn trending up. Um, I just don't think Marquette really has what it takes. Um, but for now, Ryan, we will see you and only you right back here tomorrow night for the game recap. I wish you luck and I wish the UConn Huskies all the luck as they face Marquette Ryan coming down to the wire coming down to the end of the regular season and it's just that much closer until you know what Phil and Rye on listen up.